closely related to our video covering the risk of runway excursions. This video covers the concept of a stabilized approach. Failing to establish and maintain a stabilized approach creates a ripe set of conditions for landing too fast or too far down the runway, greatly increasing the potential for a runway excursion, loss of control, or collision with terrain. In this video, we'll discuss the stabilized approach, review industry recommendations, and show you Garmin resources you can employ to reduce the risk of experiencing an adverse event related to an unstable approach. A stabilized approach provides the greatest opportunity for a successful landing in the touchdown zone of a runway. Conversely, unstable approaches have proven to make conditions ripe for landing incidents and accidents. So, just what do we mean by the term stabilized approach? A stabilized approach is one that meets certain conditions. While specific conditions may vary by operator, generally accepted conditions would include completion of approach briefings and landing checklists before the approach begins, the aircraft is on the correct flight path, only small changes in pitch and heading are required to maintain the correct flight path, the aircraft speed is not more than VREF plus 20 knots and not less than VREF. Reference the published approach airspeeds for your aircraft. The aircraft is configured for landing. The sink rate is no greater than 1,000 feet per minute the power setting is appropriate for the aircraft configuration. Deviation from lateral guidance should not exceed one dot. When flying with vertical guidance, deviation from vertical guidance should not exceed one dot. Any approaches requiring deviation from these standards must be briefed. If an approach becomes unstabilized below 1,000 feet above the touchdown zone elevation in IMC, or below 500 feet above the touchdown zone elevation in VMC, an immediate go-around should be executed. So now we have defined the stabilized approach, and it certainly makes sense to follow the criteria, but are we prepared to do so? Data collected in airline operations, where stabilized approach criteria is part of their operational procedures, shows that far too many pilots ignore the criteria and continue with a landing attempt. And if they do it, imagine how many times general aviation pilots ignore the criteria. This boils down to your commitment to safety and not wanting to become the topic of an adverse event scenario at your next pilot safety meeting. Commit yourself to execute a go-around when your approach becomes unstable. When is the last time you flew a go-around or missed approach? To be able to execute a go-around or missed approach successfully, you should practice until you're comfortable with the procedures when needed. The closer we get to our destination, the greater the pressure we feel to complete the mission, which creates a continuation bias. Sometimes passengers or ATC can add operational pressures that might influence your decision to land from an unstabilized approach. It's a good thing to recognize these pressures as a threat to safety and to stick to the stabilized approach criteria. Many landing accidents occur following visual approaches, partially due to the lack of vertical guidance. Let's face it, the visual approach is the ultimate non-precision approach. As discussed in our video on runway excursions, coming in high and fast can lead to a runway overrun event. The visual approach guidance found in several Garmin integrated flight decks addresses two of the criteria for a stabilized approach by providing lateral and vertical guidance that brings you to the touchdown zone of the runway. Many Garmin devices also provide for V-speed bug display along the speed tape, and if equipped with an angle of attack indicator, you may see an approach speed cue along the speed tape, approximating VREF speed. All of these features have the potential to aid you in maintaining a stabilized approach. One of the most recent features made available for Garmin integrated flight decks was designed specifically to aid a pilot in managing the approach to landing and is appropriately named Stabilized Approach. 
This feature provides aural and visual enunciations to notify the flight crew of unstable conditions during an approach. When installed, this feature automatically operates in the background, so unless you see a system failure message, or you select to inhibit it, it will provide alerts. To make all of this work, the system receives input from a number of sources within the flight deck architecture, providing aircraft location, heading, track ground speed, altitude, wind data, thrust settings, and gear and flap positions. The active flight plan and airport and runway information from the database also provide input. Once within the horizontal and vertical alerting zone of the system, which coincides with the approach to the runway you're aligned with, the system monitors the stabilized approach criteria configured for the aircraft. The alerting zone is divided into two levels, one providing caution alerts and another providing warning alerts. Caution alerts appear in yellow and the aural alert message plays once, as in glide path. Warning alerts appear in red and the aural alert will play twice, as in glide path, glide path. Ten different alert types can be configured. These include an approach speed alert, speed, a barrow and GPS altitude mismatch, barrow, a crosswind alert, crosswind, a tailwind alert, tailwind, a descent speed alert, sink rate, a flaps not in landing configuration alert, flaps. A gear not in landing configuration alert, gear. A lateral deviation alert, course. A vertical deviation alert, glide path. And finally, a power alert is provided, power. Note that the airport and runway that the system bases these alerts on is determined by system logic that considers the distance to the runway and the alignment of the aircraft's track with the runway bearing. This will typically be the same as the airport and runway selected in the flight plan, but the flight plan is not the source the system uses. This means you will get stabilized approach alerts for the runway you are actually set up to land on, and that's a good thing. Again, a stabilized approach provides the greatest opportunity for a good landing and provides for enhanced safety for your flight operations. If you find yourself outside of your established criteria for a stabilized approach when below designated altitudes, take the safe path and conduct a go-around. Note that many general aviation operators designate 500 feet AGL as the go-around altitude, if not stabilized. Okay, that wraps up our discussion of the stabilized approach. Be sure to check out additional information on this subject in the documents that are linked in the description for this video. We encourage you to continue your safety journey by viewing the other videos in the Garmin Aviation Risk Management series. And thanks for flying Garmin.